it's interesting. Oh, one other thing I want to say about uh, Celestine or Celestite. When you start looking at the metaphysical area, uh, metaphysical uh, write-ups about Celestine, it is tied in every way, shape, and form to the moon. Um, and that, that to me, just amazed me because, you know, I do put um, some stock in, you know, what we would call metaphysical uh, knowledge or, um, you know, hidden knowledge, occult knowledge, if you will. Um, I think that there's a lot of truth to that. People will say, oh, that's all hocus pocus. And I got to tell you, that's part of our programming to believe that anything like that is hocus pocus. But in fact, it is not. And I'm sure I don't have to speak to a lot of this community to understand that there are many things that do not, you know, meet the eye that that uh, are explained by mainstream science. And they definitely have occult um you know, explanations to them that actually make a lot of sense. But yeah, when you look at uh, Celestite or Celestine in the occult, it is tied to the moon 100%. It's absolutely you know, amazing. You know, Bob, how in medicine we have conventional medicine and unconventional medicine, otherwise called complementary medicine. We can use the, that term complementary for the type of knowledge you're talking about. So complementary knowledge, because occult is so smeared into the dark you know the devil worship all of that stuff but complementary knowledge you know it fits it is knowledge it's true and it's just unconventional this might very well be the most difficult video i've set out to make yet i'm incredibly torn i'm torn I'm torn because on the one hand, having now been actively investigating the Flat Earth for almost a year now, and participating in this nebulous thing that so many people refer to as the Flat Earth community. Obviously the prospect of seeing what the true Flat Earth map really looks like is something which seems like it would be the most amazing revelation to behold, and I, mean, I probably don't need to tell many of you that. So when I heard the announcement a week ago from Bob and Globebusters about the map they were working on, I was, of course, overwhelmed with curiosity and anticipation. And so now, after having seen the preliminary presentation of what they were working on, the, the primer as they called it, I'll say right up front that I'm pretty excited about it because from the initial material put forward, I, I have to say that I do believe that they may have very well cracked it. I'd go, to, I'd go so far as to say I'd be kind of shocked if it doesn't turn out to be something along the lines of what Cammy and Bob and the rest of the team has been putting together. It's actually kind of uncanny how so many of the elements of what they shared about in their process of putting the map together really does echo so, so many of the things that I and many of other people have been looking into independently. And just the fact that the magnetic lines of force was taken as being the primary step towards realigning everything correctly and working from the assumption that they're somewhere there really is a literal Mount Maru of some kind it was it was just thrilling to me uh, was, ever since getting into this flutter thing that I've had this nagging thought that something had to be askew with the whole official explanation magnetic declination and everything I mean it, it has to be hiding something so yeah it's pretty darn exciting because it seems like they're at least really starting to zero in on how the map actually works and and to think that it might even be able to finally address at least a large number of those pesky anomalies, uh, such as the southern stars or the flights in the southern hemisphere, I mean, that would be incredible. And yet, as I sat and listened to the four-hour presentation and tried to soak it all in, I found myself suddenly feeling hit by a ton of bricks by the implications of what I was seeing, and honestly just the implications of what we've all been doing for this past year. Perhaps one of the most striking features about this new map and model that they're working on is that it involves moving the Prime Meridian from Greenwich to the Pyramids of Giza. And the working premise behind this is that it essentially lines up the magnetic lines of force along the ground with the electromagnetic toroidal vortex of the heavens overhead. And so, in short, if this map and approach is at all correct, then it seems like what would have been effectively achieved is a cosmography which actually reflects the well-known esoteric principle of as above, so below. And 
And as I reflected upon this, I couldn't help but notice how many little references were being made in the presentation to <clears throat> possible correlations to Masonic symbolism, whether it's the 33 degrees or the square and compass or whatever. And, and of course, that's nothing new, but I mean, we've all done this. We've all speculated about how the Masons have distorted everything and somehow turned the flat map into a globe and passed it off and how there might be clues embedded in their symbols and all the rest. I mean, I, I've done it. And so for whatever reason, I was just struck deeply by the fact that we're all here, gathered together, trying to see if we can solve this puzzle. A puzzle that was created by these various forms of mystery school initiates. And I don't know about you, but this troubles me. Because if you know anything about what the mystery schools, about secret societies and ancient esoteric orders are really all about then you know that their whole design is to be one giant labyrinthian maze, one endless puzzle after another, intended to take the seeker step by step, clue by clue, towards a singular spiritual destination. Each level, each new layer, slowly introduces new concepts and practices, gradually taking the pupil further and further away from a knowledge of the one true God and his righteous law. Towards the inverse, the opposite, the fallen one. Each and every ancient mystery school, every secret society, every cult, every pagan mythos, every shamanic tradition is designed to one way or another lead a person towards embracing the core tenet of the Luciferian lie. The lie that goes all the way back to the garden, as recorded in Genesis 3, where Satan lied to Adam and Eve and said, Do this and your eyes will be opened, and you will be as God, knowing good and evil. And even though this concept of self-deification can be expressed and taught in many different forms, it's always the same net result. Somehow or another, whether through rash individualism or serene pantheistic monism, humanity is elevated to seeking the divinity in ourselves, to being our own God, our own Savior, through the acquisition and application of quote-unquote secret knowledge. So here is the disturbing realization that has struck me. It's the stunning fact that this, quote, flat earth awakening seems to quite possibly and even probably serve to drive countless new individuals down a path of Gnosticism. Whereby so many of the different individual topics which have arisen in the course of this cosmological investigation, such as uh, magnetism, cymatics, frequencies, natural harmonics, the magnetic permeability of certain crystals and minerals, Almost all of them just so happen to function as a very attractive conduit for delving deeper into the esoteric and the occult. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that there isn't a reality to all these sorts of things. If you've seen my videos, you know that, you already know this. But the point is that if anyone is immersing themselves in these things without the foundation of literal biblical truth, they are, as the Bible describes, like waves on the sea being tossed back and forth by every kind of false teaching. Personally, I've never believed it was a foregone conclusion that the Flat Earth would eventually break through into the mainstream and cause some sort of societal shift or anything like that. In fact, I've always been pretty skeptical. But if indeed the puzzle of the map is actually solved, I, I admit it's hard to say how far that could actually go and how that might indeed turn the tide to convince many more people to finally take a look for themselves. But even so, even... Even if a somewhat accurate map of the Flat Earth and its correspondence to the functions of the heavenly bodies is finally derived, well, then the simple question remains. Then what? Does it stop there? Or do all the really important existential questions still remain? Or better yet, become that much more pressing? because as we already see, every time I turn around within this Flat Earth community, it seems, I'm hearing more and more people talk about 
embracing the relationship between the physical and the metaphysical or being all about consciousness and also hearing more and more people poo-pooing the idea that we should have any wariness about seeking so-called secret knowledge. Occult just means hidden, they always say. Okay, well, hidden by whom? The flawed logic of this argument is enough to drive me crazy, yet I hear it almost every day. It completely ignores the blunt fact that the people who you so despise and constantly decry, these Masonic manipulators and Illuminati puppeteers, they've lied to you your whole life, stolen from everyone, murdered countless millions and perpetrated an unprecedented list of atrocities upon humanity. And yet you think that somehow the same secret knowledge which they have hoarded to themselves, whether it be about free energy or third eye activation or quantum technology or whatever else, you think that this special secret knowledge is what we can use to elevate our consciousness and free humanity and finally make the world safe and free and everything else? Do you not realize that this same idea is being pumped through every same avenue of the propaganda machine as is the globe and evolution and the war on terror and every other false narrative out there? How do you not see that? It's coming from the same source. There's nothing new under the sun. The enemy has been preparing for his final play for a long, long, long time. And I'll just end with this image. This which also struck me, as I looked upon this new take on the Flat Earth map, which again I think is quite probably going to prove itself quite valid. But if you just look at it, what do you see? I see the lines between the magnetic points and the curving line of the magnetic field itself superimposed over each other like two triangles. It's the same underlying thing that's contained within this whole magnetic toroidal vortex concept itself. The upward and downward, the above and the below, the hourglass, the conduit, the tree, the ladder. I think I now see why Satan would potentially choose to allow this revelation of the flat earth at such a time as now, after having himself worked so hard to hide it and confuse it for centuries. He's been laying the groundwork for ages. He's been lining it all up. He first erased the true nature of creation from history, only to have it finally be rediscovered through the filter of New Age occultism, which the world is now saturated in to a degree never before seen in history. God's creation becomes his creation, and he intends to use every element of God's supernatural and closed cosmology to deceive people further into the Luciferian delusion. In effect, Satan has turned the world itself into the final massive mystery school preparing the entire world as a whole to embrace with open arms the externalization of his demonic hierarchy. We have a very interesting subject this morning, and of course, it'll probably be interesting and unsolved when we finish, because it deals with one of the most curious and neglected areas of human research, and that is the magnetic fields, not only of man, but of the universe and of the smallest atom. The beginning of the study of magnetism can be traced back to Egypt, and uh, the staffs and wands of the ancient priests were instruments of magnetic conjuring. 